It's been a while since we've investigated my personal favorite location for the old world research, a place that by just being there will put you right back into the old world instantly. And that place is Budapest, where we have Buddha Castle, where they have broken the rooms of this palace into six different things, including a national gallery, a historical museum, and a library. A palace library in Budapest, where we know this isn't the only library in Budapest, where they also have the Metropolitan Urban Library, located right down the road, housing Budapest's largest public collection of books, over 1.1 million volumes. And Budapest must like their books, since we also have the Americana Public Library of Budapest. And we've seen this one before, which is right next to the Parliament Building. Have you ever seen a library like this in your life? Do any of our towns have any future plans to knock any libraries out that look anything like this in the upcoming months? No. So these libraries are all right next to each other. Let's go back to the first one, within the walls of Buddha Castle. And this is very interesting. When they do the same thing that we've seen all over the world, and they name it something else. If you're just reading through this very quickly, they act like this thing was built in 1802, and they try to trip people up with the constant name-changing game. When we know this isn't true, we know that it wasn't originally a library. We know that this is a part of Buddha Castle. Where Buddha Castle, we are told, and according to their story, was built between 1247 and 1265. 777 years ago. Not even close to this 1802 date. And they have these dates down. Everything is documented. No mistakes were ever made because these 1200s people were just hard workers. They weren't distracted and they were just very dedicated to their craft. They worked by candlelight and touched up that stone with their lucky duck feathers. And it's here forever. They pretend to have these dates pinned down, 1247 and not 1246, and King Bela IV of Hungary, him and his crew, wrapped this thing up in 1265 on the dot. They know all of the information. The whole story is documented, but they give us zero details on the construction every single time. They don't tell us who these master builders were. They don't tell us where they learned this technology to build massive palaces. The king just got it done, and that's that. And we're supposed to just believe that. They give us these drawings of it, with two guys in a canoe, just taking it all in. From 1490 on the dot. When we all know that this could have been easily drawn last night. And three years later, they found some colored pencils and got this one done for us. It's very nice of them. 30 years later, the color is gone. And we are back to black and white and two more people waving down here at the bottom. And Budapest had a very nice community in the 1530s, 100 years later, according to the mainstream narrative. 100 years later, we're back to color. Cannons firing at each other, where we all know that firing cannons into your own buildings is completely normal and realistic. Now, on September 1-1, 1526, 498 years ago, Buddha was sacked and burned. And the royal palace was not damaged, of course. The statues were destroyed a few years later. This is all documented and the paperwork is in hand. No. Now I say this because going back through the first 63 episodes so many times, they have zero documented information about the 1800s. So many times, they don't know who the architect was or who the construction company was. You can see this for yourself when we emailed these buildings in episode 33. But they can pin down a date in 1526 and they know all about the story. Now, we also know that they tell us that Buddha Castle was constructed in 1247 to 1265, where we have shown in episode 63, mathematically, according to the data that they provided us, that the world population is decreasing every 69 years, going back in time, at a rate of 66.1765%. And this is according to what we are being told, where we have shown that the population in 1265 was only 52,000 people worldwide. 
not just in Budapest. The size of a town today was the size of the world population in the year that they're telling us that they knocked out a palace that lasts forever. Now, we all know that this was constructed by a very powerful, very intelligent civilization and the population worldwide definitely took a massive hit at some point before the 1700s, where humans, I believe, repopulate back to billions of people relatively fast. I think the real population chart looks much different than what we're shown. I think that there are many times that the population worldwide is in the billions. Based on what they're telling us, you can look at this chart for yourself, showing that basically nobody was even here in the 1200s, according to the mainstream narrative. This shows that nobody could build massive palaces with no power tools, zero equipment, no training processes. The 25 people that lived in Budapest, their only edge against our civilization today was having a little better work ethic. And that's not working anymore. These charts are nonsense. They show how fast humans truly do recreate to the population that we're at today, which is why they are able to reset the population so often in my opinion, using the same ridiculous narratives over and over for the exact same buildings, using the same technology that was here before and just pretending like it's all brand new, where this place that we live is much different than we're being told, where everything is reused, everything is given back to us, everything is one big cycle, everything. The years go from January to December, every year, seasons, days, technology, and civilizations, everything is one big cycle, everything. And I wouldn't be shocked at all if we do too. I wonder if they know this, this all feels like some sort of treasure hunt, like some sort of game. To see who can find this information, where we have all heard the saying that they have to tell us like it's a rule, where I'm starting to think it's not that they have to tell us, it's that they want to tell us, like it's fun to them. To see who can crack the code, that nearly everything in our so-called reality is complete nonsense. And our true reality is much deeper than what we're told where one of the only things that is free in this world is an indoctrination program that comes to your house in the morning and picks you up every single day as a small kid. And you don't know any different because your parents did the same thing too. Until now, welcome to episode 64 of my lunch break. I hope you're all having a great day. And if you're new, welcome. <laughs> And I want to thank all of our sponsors over on Patreon. Thank you to FlatEarthDave.com. You can check out his app. I'll put the link in the description and you can use my referral code MLB. He also has my lunch break on the homeschool section of the app, which is really cool. Thank you to Rebecca K, Don Gaston, Christopher Arietta, The Lady Lacey Show, David and Sherry Ferguson, Edwin Johnson, Chuck Templeton, Joy Lee, PNR, Stephanie Nolan, The Burlesons, Suez KC, Dan Woodle, Dale, DJ Clicktrack, Edward and Brianna, Jacob Law, Jim Ribley and Christine Duggan, Kyle Glascock, Tim Rack, William Richard Jeffries V, PKTFnews.org, Regna Saturna, 3D6.Space, Attila Power, Buck Suey, Dakota Dunn, DRob33, Eric Martinez, Ivan Apocteli, Jesse DeLeon, Jim Bro, Kit Kat, Todd K, Edwin Rice, Helmut, Charles Kruger, Daniel Zid, Glenn Gunderson, Pacific Crafted, Z Dub Customs, Haggard T shirts.com, Meta, Jason Hochberg, Blake, Jessica, Alex, and Cypress, Carla Fitzgerald, Natalie Shippenoff, Marie C, Roy Schoenholtz, Wayne T, Nico Poeta, Sirius Feline, Ryan and Laney Benner, Isaac Wright, Melissa Edgar, James Alt, Dan McGee, Vince Moreno, Samir Schwery, Stony Stargot, Roz Matthews, Shiba Shaba in the Darkness, Spartan Oneg, and VKH Bonner. You guys are all awesome and helping this channel out a lot. So the last time we looked into Budapest, we saw this courtyard where they have this library and it's right next to the parliament building that we have talked about. It also has the chocolate museum and so much more. 
footwear today, I want to show you all why Budapest is my number one location worldwide. And it's because nearly every single building is a palace. If there's one place in the world I would want to visit, this is it. And I would love to go inside these buildings and see if there's basements and see if these basements had tunnels, windows and doors that lead to dirt. I wouldn't be shocked at all. We see this kind of stuff in the USA. So seeing it in Budapest, I'm sure these tunnels would be incredible. I wouldn't be shocked at all if these buildings are bigger than we can see under the ground. So here we have another museum where they have taken the true meaning of this building right off the front where this gets interesting. They tell us that the past 150 years of this building's history have been largely determined by a struggle to maintain its facilities and keep its collections safe. Struggling to keep its collections safe? From who? Is there a reason that Budapest is still filled with palaces and the rest of the world has had thousands of fires in individual buildings that we have located, thousands of buildings destroyed in so-called great fires, carpet bombed in wars, like we have seen in Dresden, Germany, where in my opinion, every single one of these major cities worldwide looked like Budapest. Budapest has survived all of these things, the great fires, the wars, and the rest. Is there something protecting this location? It's very interesting. And remember, this is the location that Nikola Tesla went and worked in 1881, where he was the chief electrician and then went to the USA and had all of these incredible inventions. Now, were they inventions or did he learn a few things while over in Budapest? Now we have seen the exact same narrative before where we go back to our Balboa Park episodes where they say that they move from building to building over and over and over before finally settling on a palace. And it lasts forever and looks like it was built by the gods. We are told that they moved into its first home in 1892. One year later, inadequate conditions forced them to move again into an apartment building. 1898, their permanent location was born. Well, no, because 1906, they moved again to the Millennial Exhibition's empty hall of industry. But in 1924, storm damage, of course, prompted yet another relocation over to a school building where five years later they reopened using 30 school rooms until 1975 rolls around and they get the Palace of Justice building. So they just throw all of these locations into the story to distract us all from the point. And the point is, is that this is a palace and we wanna know the true history of the building. We don't care about this random group that is occupying the palace. At least not today we don't. It's literally throwing a bunch of nonsense out there and hoping we give up by the time we get to the end of the story. That has nothing to do with what we want to know. The good thing is we found the building and we have gotten through the nonsense. The Palace of Justice was designed by Elios Hausman. And we're definitely going to get back to this guy later in the episode. In 1891, knocking this building out in three years in the 1800s, before the power tool was invented. In 1895, where it has a lobby with marble columns and an impressive staircase. And this is just your everyday museum in Budapest. If you want to feel like you're back in the previous civilization, all you got to do is go to Budapest. It is by far the most incredible place that I've seen to this point. And I honestly don't think that we've even covered 1% of it, where they also tell us that this building is under renovation. And I was honestly disappointed to see that last sentence because we all know that restoration really means destruction. So I found some really cool pictures of this place that I thought you'd all wanna see. And then like I mentioned earlier, we have the best part in my opinion, where we are given the individual that is pinned as the man that got this palace done. Mr. Hausman, where we know that when they pin a guy to one building, they pin him to a lot more. They give us this list where they pin this character to 39 palaces, where the first one was destroyed by a fire. So we can add that one to our running tally. And they even pin him as a contest winner of the parliament building, but they just didn't want to use his design because they have so many more contest winners out there in the 1800s. It's ridiculous. 
They destroy six of his buildings, including his first four buildings. And they tell us that this guy was knocking these palaces out all over Budapest in the 1800s before power tools in like one or two years each. All of them coming back to back to back when he starts building in 1870 and gets both buildings done that year. 71 to 72, another one done. Between 1874 and 1893, just 19 years, this guy is pinned to getting 33 palaces done. When we know that in modern times, realistic times, when we are all here to see it, the Kluczynski building in Chicago takes 14 years. One building, not 33 buildings, and it's a box, not a palace. And we have power tools, and this guy doesn't, where it's time to see some of these buildings that this guy is pinned to. Let's start at the top. The first one that they didn't destroy, Church of the Sacred Heart, where this is a worldwide agenda, a worldwide narrative key. And we unlocked it right here on this channel in the 8th of April, 1848. A huge fire burst out and the Catholic Church burnt down to the ground, where the savior, the man, the myth, and the legend builds them a new one. When we know that this church, the one we're looking at, it is the original building. Finding a fire narrative never gets old to me. It actually surprises me more and more every single time. It's really shocking that this information, this clue was just sitting here and we never saw it until now. They tell us that this building was done in a year and then the next one was done in two years where we clearly have technology on the roof of this thing. And it's very odd when you look at their Facebook page where we know that they tell us that it was constructed in 1878. These gravestones are dated 1792 to 1869 and 1796 to 1834. This is not even close to the construction date that they're telling us of 1878 and would predate this master builder character where we are told that he was born in 1847, which is 13 years after this person passed away that lived there. So we know at this point that something major is off with this narrative and this character. And this character is beginning to look sketchy. And before we go on, let's all take a minute and thank all of our badge members. I want to thank all of our Patreons and every single subscriber. You are all awesome and really helping grow this channel to a bigger and bigger audience every single week. We're also on X and Rumble. I'm starting to post episodes on X if you're interested in that. Not only is that all strange, but we also have this guy off building like six other palaces at the same exact time. The City Hall and Theater, which was destroyed. And then we have this, his 11th building in his young career, where he was only 23 years old when he began knocking out palaces without a power tool, just using his local donkey to pull the stone. We now are given the Austro-Hungarian bank, which I believe is definitely helping us pin down where our timeline begins. We know about the population. We know about the great fires. We know about the inventions. And now we need to see when the money all begins, where they tell us where it started issuing banknotes in 1762, where we also know that this group started in 1717. And for the first time in this timeline's history, the Austrian government issues paper money and caused inflation, where we're just getting started. And I'm not gonna leave anything out. So we're gonna be back next weekend where we will also see what this character supposedly built in Budapest, as well as begin to look into the financial situation all over the world. Next Saturday, 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time on YouTube and Rumble. We'll pick up right where we left off. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. See ya.